for arrays the size uh, must be known must be known at creation time when we create the array and the size cannot change mm -hmm. cannot change while the program is running mm -hmm. okay but what but the list lists are similar to arrays but they can dynamically be resized they can grow by adding more elements or they can shrink by removing elements that's basically the major difference and when i create a list or an array list i don't need to if I don't know this, I don't need the size, by the way. I don't need it. Okay. That, that's the idea. Okay, so let's start with the basics. First of all, just to remind ourselves, these are simple variables. You can store one value at a time. Now, you're already familiar with this. If to declare a simple variable, you put the data type, followed by the name of the variable, and if you wish, you can initialize it. Those are value types, so the value that you assign will be, will be stored in the actual variable. That's basically the idea of simple types. Now, an array has two parts. When you create an array, you, you, this is the array declaration. This part here is the declaration. Yeah? And this part here is the actual creation of the array. So initially, when you just declare, and you can put them in two lines if you wish. That's very common when we declare and, and create the array in one line, in most cases. But if you wish to put them in two lines, it doesn't matter. You can do that. Um, so in here, when I just create it, what do you think the value of num? Yeah, Null. Because an array is an object. So the value of, sorry, the value of, uh, of num will be basically a num. Okay, and once I create it, once I create the array, what do you think the value of num will be? Zero? No, no, the value of num. We need to be careful here. No, no, no. You need to be careful here. Okay, now, num, is it, a, is, it, is it a value type or a reference type? It will contain the address of the array. So remember, array is an object, and which which also means array is a reference type. It's not a value type. Yes. So the array will be created somewhere in memory. And how many how many memory locations will be allocated to this array? Based on the size. So three memory locations. Each location has an associated index. Index 0 for the first element of the array, index 1, index 2. Those will be created, which, we, which in, in computer terminology we call it memory allocation. And this memory, this memory location will have an address, let's say 569. This address will be stored in, in this actual variable, 569. Which, which means the variable, uh, the, the array variable is nothing that points a reference to or a pointer to the actual memory location where the array was created. Is clear? Okay. That's what a reference type means. A reference type does not store the actual values. It just stores the memory location where, in this case, where the array is created. Yeah. And the array elements uh, can be accessed using the index. And the index goes from 0, zero to size minus, size minus 1. That's it. That's the, uh, the, that's the idea of arrays. Now, when I create an array, you know this 3 here, this is basically the size. This is a must. I cannot create an array without size. So size is a must because an array is a fixed length data structure. The, the, the link is fixed once you create it. And once you create it, you cannot change it. You cannot change the size. That's it. Once the array is created, you cannot extend the array or shrink the array. That's it. The array size is fixed at the time of creation. Now, if you notice here, when I create the array, I didn't put any values there yet. But the values are already zeros here. 
So this is another behave of arrays. When I create an array, the elements are auto-initialized. The elements, the values there, are auto-initialized. Auto-initialized based on what? Based on the type, thank you. Based on the type. Now, if the type is numeric, which means int, float, double, what will be the default value? Zero. If the type is Boolean? False. False. It will be false. Yeah, which is internally represented as, as zero, but it is, uh, for a programmer perspective, it is false. Okay? Uh, and then, if it is a string, let's no. say, no. If it is an array of students, class, no. 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 Okay? So, that's the idea here. So, array elements are auto-initialized with the type's default value, zero for numeric types, false for Boolean, and null for reference types. Clear? That's basically the idea of arrays. Now, when I create an array, arrays store values of the same type. And the type could be anything. It could be an int, a double, it could be a class, it could be a string. In it, any data type, you can use it to create an array. And of course, when you create the array, you must specify the size. The size must be specified at the creation time. And the size cannot change once as the array, as the uh, cannot change once the array is created. The size cannot change. Of course, before you create, you can ask the user to give you the size. No problem. It's not like C++. C++ is even more restrictive. You cannot even ask the user. The value is kind of hard coded. Well, we did have a size, but we could um, declare variable. Yeah. And then ask the user to enter the pair, and then after he enters the size, for example, we can just create the array. That's my sure? idea. Too. So let's say for the I think vectors we're talking size, about. And then we can just. Create no, I think in C++, no, in Java, yes. In C++, I think the size is constant. Any of you recall this? To change it, the size used to do something to make the change. You can change it by, by changing the value of the You can verify this by changing the value of the size constant, but you cannot ask the user to enter it in, in, in C. Sorry? It will only work if it's not constant. No, no, even if it's. You cannot have a. We can verify this. Now, in my understanding, in, in C arrays, the size must be a constant value. You cannot even ask the user to enter it. Anyway, C++ is, is gone the, air at the, the time of it. You can verify this information. But the main thing in Java is yes, the, the, the size, you can ask the user to enter it. Yeah? And then you create the, the, actual, uh, the actual array. Yeah? But once the array is created, the memory allocated to the array, that's it. That memory allocation will stay the same until the program closes. You cannot change it. That, that's the idea here. Okay. Now, you can also explicitly initialize the array at time of creation. So in here, for example, I'm creating an array of ints, and I'm using the curly braces and putting some values there. So this will create an array of five elements, and it will initialize each, each element with the corresponding value. So that's another way of initializing the array. Um, otherwise, if I just... Hmm, interesting. Okay. Otherwise, if I just uh, declare it this way... Sorry, th this is declaration. I declare it this way and create it using the new uh, keyword, then the values will be auto-assigned, auto-initialized with zero. The elements will be auto-initialized auto with zero. And then in here, in this case, for example, I am assigning one to element zero and assigning two to element one. Uh, and this is how it is done. And remember, the, uh, the array elements are accessed by index, and the index goes from zero to array size minus one. Okay, so arrays can be used Wherever you can declare and wherever you use variables, arrays can be used as well in Java. There is no restriction. You can use them to create attributes of a class. 
you can use them to create local a local variable within a function. You can use them as a parameters of a function. You can use them as a return type of a function. You can use arrays any in any of these scenarios, no problem. So here is an example of a function that returns an array. Here we have a function that returns an array. So what we have, <coughs> sorry, what we have in this function, so it is a, the function is called init array. It takes a size, the desired size of the array, and the value we want to put in every element. So first we go ahead and create an array of the size that, that is given in the argument. And then we loop through every element and we assign the init value to, if, to every element and then we return the array. So this is just to show you that, an, uh, that a function or a method in, uh, in Java can return an array, no problem. Okay, we already discussed this. Arrays are objects, which means they are also reference type. So if I do something like this, if I assign A and B, so, sorry, if I create an array A, initialize it like this, and then assign, then create, declare, not create, declare another array variable B, and I assign A to B, what this, what this means? What does this mean? Address gives A the same, yeah. gives B the same uh, address in the same address in memory. So, so basically, both of them will be pointing to the same array. So what this will do, this line here, this line here, will do something like this. We'll create an array in memory with three elements. It will assign one, two, three in, to those elements. A, let's say this, the address of this memory location block, this memory block, is 303, for example. So the value of B of A will be 303, which means A is pointing to this array. Now, if I assign A to B, it means B will, be, will have memory location 303, which means B also will be pointing to the same array. That's why in the quiz we, we said reference type can point to the same memory location, yeah? So there's only one array, but we have two pointers to it, or two references to access it. We can either access it through A or through B. Same thing, if, if, if I access it through B and do some change, of course if I access it through A again, I see the change, because both of them are referring to the same array. Because arrays are reference types. Okay, inside the array, of course, the elements, they could be primitive type or they could be reference types, which means I can store simple values or I can store objects inside my array elements. Now, because they are reference types, we already seen this. Although these two arrays are identical in terms of content, if I try to do, to check whether A is equal to B, using this uh, double equal to check the equality, then surprisingly, what will be the result of this comparison? False. Why is it false? Yes, because these are reference types. Yeah? So to make this clearer, so in here, for example, the consequence of this line in memory, uh, a memory block will be allocated to the array and this memory block will, ha will, have, will be stored in the three elements of the array. Here is uh, element one, two, three. These are the values assigned. And let's say, they, let's say the memory address of this array is, let's say, 609. So this value will be assigned to the variable A. And now B will create yet another block in memory allocated for the array B. And it will be initialized with one, two, three. But the address, of course, will be different, seven, nine, zero. And the value, this, this address, this memory address will be assigned to B. So this will be seven, nine, zero. Yeah, of course, this one is pointing to different arrays. 
If I do is A equal to B, no, it will be false. What, what's the interpretation of false? They are, the same address. They are pointing to different addresses. They are referring to two different arrays in two different memory locations. Now, if my intention, if my intention is to check whether the two arrays are identical, how do I do this? Check every element. First, check the size. If the size is different, what's the conclusion? They are not identical. So I don't even need to go through and look through. Now, if the size is identical, what I will do? Look through and check the values of the elements in the same index. So check the, these values at index 1 or index 0. Check these values as index 1 and check these values as index 2. If these values are equal and all of them equal, then I conclude that the, ar the arrays are identical. Otherwise, if any of those values are different, then I just exit and say, no, they are not equal. Okay? And this, this is exactly what this loop is doing. So in here, I have two arrays passed to this, uh, passed to this uh, function called r equal. First, I check the length. If the length is different, no need to, to look through them. Just return false immediately. Now, if the length is the same, then I'll go through one, one element at a time and check. If I find one element different, I don't need to continue through the loop. I just exit with false. If I am lucky to go through the whole loop and I couldn't find any element that are different, then my conclusion is they are identical. So that's basically the implementation of if I want to check equality. Now, in arrays, it is very common to look for things in, inside the array. I'm looking for certain value inside the array. So to do that, I do what is known as a linear search or sequ sequential search, which means I iterate through the array from the beginning to end, mm -hmm. from the index zero to size minus one, looking for, for, what I'm, for, what, for what I want. This is called the linear search. Of course, in 303 data structure course, you will see much more sophisticated ways, faster ways of searching. But for now, it's just a simpler way. Um, for example, here I have an array items, and I want to check if this array items contain this element. So all I do, I look through every element. If I find it, I just return true. Otherwise, I return false. Yeah. Now, a couple of things I want to highlight here. This we already seen this before. This is an enhanced loop. It's very elegant one and more suitable when we are iterating through an array or a list. And it's convenient because what, what's the convenience? What's the difference here? We don't have to create a variable for this. Yes, we don't have. We don't need to uh, to have a counter. We don't need to use a counter to go through the loop. We just go through the loop this way. It's more convenient, more concise. And take a look at this. In here, I did not use the double equal to check the equality. Why did we not use the double equal to check equality? Because the elements of the array and the parameter are of type string. Okay. Is this a reference type or a value type? A reference type. Reference type, I should be very careful. When to check equality, I should not use the double equal. I should use, in this case, equals. And not only equals, ignore case. Which means if I have, let's say, uh, Java, uppercase, first letter uppercase, and the other one Java or lowercase, they will be matched. They will match. So in here, I'm ignoring the case. Or I can use the, the normal version, which is the equals, which is case sensitive. Java uppercase will be different than Java or lowercase. But if my intention is to ignore, I consider both the same, I can do equality while ignoring, making it case insensitive. Yeah? But the main thing here is not to use the double equal to check the equality between the two strings. Because the string is a reference time. So please make a Keep, it this, keep this in mind, okay? Now, for the enhanced loop, I already showed you what enhanced loop uh, looks like. 
So I basically declare a variable and put colon and put the array name and then inside I can access the, every element in this in this array. This is called an enhanced for loop. Now we also have something called two-dimensional arrays or multi-dimensional array. The most uh, common one, the most useful one, is a two-dimensional array. Two-dimensional array is similar to Excel. Okay, in Excel, what we have, we have columns and we have rows. Yeah, so similar to this. So in here, for example, in this scenario, I have three rows and and four columns, and every cell in this table is accessible using the row index and the column index. So for example, this particular element here is at row one, column two. Yeah, and of course the index starts from zero to size minus one. So the, because I have three rows, the rows index will be zero, one, two. And because I have four columns, the index of the column will be zero, one, two, three. That's basically the idea of two-dimensional array. Um, now, in here, this is how I declare them. This is how I declare a two-dimensional array. So similar to declaring a one-dimensional array, so instead of using one square bracket, I use two square brackets, one for the rows, one for the columns. And in here, what I'm doing, I'm creating an array with three rows, and five columns, three rows and five columns, okay? So basically what this will do, this will create a table with three rows and five columns, okay? Zero, one, two, three, no, sorry, zero, one, two, three. Three rows and four columns, sorry, this one doesn't exist. Okay, and the, co and the rows will be 0, 1, 2. Yep. And then I can read and write any of these. For example, if I want to store a value 10 in this location here, all I need to do, I, I put the name of the array. This is the row 1, column 2, equals 10. And then 10 will be stored there. Yep. That's basically the idea. I can read and write by going to the array variable name. The first square bracket, I put the index of the row. The second square bracket, I put the index of the column. And that's how I do two-dimensional array. Now, if I happen to have some values, I can create the array by initializing it. So in here, what I have, this is a 2D array, array that has two rows. These are the values of the first row. And these are the values of the second row. And of course, one, two, three, these are the columns. So I have a row, this, in this array, I have a two-dimensional array with two rows and three columns. That's the idea of 2D array. And when I access it, I access it by using the index of the row and the index of the column. Yeah? And I can access particular cell in that particular array. Okay. Now, for lists, why Java has lists is to solve this problem that we have with arrays. Two issues we have with arrays. First one is, I must know the size. Sometimes I don't know the size. Um, let's say I have an array of orders in a restaurant, let's say. But I'm not sure what, how many orders that restaurant will receive. It's a risk. I don't know. So, but arrays forces you to, to do it. And usually you have to do, you have to do it, to do it in, a, in a generous way. If you are expecting 100, you make it 120 just in case. The, and that 20 will be wasting your memory, of course. And if you go beyond 120, you have a problem. You cannot extend it. Uh, so you need to know the size, and the size cannot change once you create the array. Two problems. And then basically the solution is to use array list. And the array list is similar to array, same behave, with one more powerful feature, which is dynamic resizing. Grow by adding more elements and shrink by moving elements. Okay. 
Now this is how I create the array. So if I want to create an array, an array, sorry, if I want to create an array list, so what I do is something like this, list. I put here the data type, let's say integer. By the way, the data type must be a class. It cannot be a simple type. It must be a class, cannot be a simple type. Put the name of the, of the, of the list equal new array array list um, empty brackets and then the parentheses yeah and by the way these two these two classes live in a package called java.util i will explain this later on So Java comes with so many classes, thousands of classes, brilliance. And these classes are organized into packages to make it more organized and easy to access. So which package this array list lives in? Java. Java the utils. Yep. Java the util, I think. Let me see. Yeah, Java the util without S. And this is basically how I create the list. So I create, uh, and let me just, sorry, let me just rename this one. Refactor, rename, we we'll call it numbers. Yeah. If, make sure here the data type is a class. Yeah, I cannot put, for example, double. I get an error immediately. Dimension to complete. I mentioned to complete reference type. So it must be a reference type, mm -hmm. okay? Not dimension, di um, yes, it must be a reference type, okay? But luckily, even if we have uh, simple values, we can use, because every, uh, every uh, primitive type, there is a corresponding class. So if I, if I want to store just doubles, I, I put list of doubles with the uppercase. And I use the add method to keep adding, keep adding to the array. Um, now remove, this is a good example. Remove, have a look at this. If I remove, I can do two things. If I, I can remove here 20.5, this will remove the element with the value 20.5. So if I run this, you will see here 20.5, you see it's, it's gone. I can also remove by putting an index. What this will do? Remove the element that never Remove, now let, let me put one. It will remove what? This one. Yeah. So you see here, what, what, is, what are we just seeing now? What, what, what we have here, remove is an overload. Yeah, of course it is uh, shrinking the radius. But also, remove is an overloaded method. Okay. Overload, what does that mean? Because we can remove the, with an integer. Yes. You see here, if, if, I, if I put one, which is an integer, I run, you see 5.5 .5 is gone. Or I can remove by value. Let's say if I put here 5.6, that will be removed. So same method, different usage. So us as developers, we know that a list has a remove. Do I have to have two methods, one removed by value, removed by index? No, only one, one method, which is remove. So it's easier for us. Even, even easier for my slides. You see here, I put them all in one slide, the most important methods. But if, if they weren't overloaded, then it's a problem. I have remove by value, remove by index. But I have only one remove. Of course, in this case, in this scenario, if I pass a double, double uh, a value with a decimal, my intention is to do what? Remove the element. Remove the, remove, yes, remove the elements with that particular value. Now, take a look at this. If I put 1.0, what do you think will happen? Nothing will happen. Why? 
because because it's it will be the the intention here is to look for any element with the value 1.0 and remove it and we don't have such such element see here we still have three elements in the array yeah but as soon as i put this one the intention now is totally different what i'm doing now removing the index, removing the elements at index 1 what is the lucky one here? 5.5 will be gone. So if I run this, we have this. Okay. These are type of exam questions, by the way, because these are really assess your understanding of what's going on here. Yes, please. If I have the, uh, the value was uh, 9.75 mm -hmm. for integer. Which one is that? Yeah. Very good question. If I have this. It will create confusion, but but Java does not allow this confusion in the first place by not allowing you to have the type of the list cannot be a simple type. It must be a reference type. Can it be the integer class? Yes, it can be an integer class. And then if I put Oh yes, here it will create a confusion, for sure. But I will show you how to f avoid the confusion. Is to put something like new. Is a better way of putting it. Um, let me show you. Integer. Think from or something. Value of. Let me just try this. Uh, let me try it and then I will explain it. Okay, here, what I'm doing here, I am asking, please go ahead and remove if you find a value one. Yeah, but if I put, this will avoid the confusion to the compiler. If I put one, what's my intention now? Is to remove the element with index one. Yeah. If I put this, my intention is to remove the elements with the value one. Yeah. Let, let me let, let's try it. If I put here, let's say five. Okay. Let's just change this one to 20, 25. Hopefully, if everything goes well, see if uh, five is gone. Yeah. But if I put here five, let's see, I'm not sure, will we get an error maybe? Yes, an error saying index out of bound, etc. You're trying to remove something that doesn't exist. Yeah, array out of the bound. Sorry, I will just show you one last thing, let you go. Um, this is called variable length arguments. And this is a new feature I, I just came across, across it recently. In Java, what you can do is, you can, you can create a function, and this function can receive as many arguments as you wish of a particular type. So, for example, here, I have an average method, and it takes as many doubles as you wish. So, here is how I call it. Here, I call it with how many variables? Three. Three, three, three arguments. I can increase this. No problem. Yeah. So this is a variable length argument list. Variable length argument list. How do I create a parameter that is variable length argument? argument? Is by putting these three dots after the data type. And this variable becomes like a list. This variable here becomes like a list. I, I treat it like a list and it has a property length. It's like a list, exactly like a list. It behaves exactly like a list. But, you, but the, the, the only thing here, you can only have one of such parameters and it must be at the end, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's just a feature, uh, keep, it, keep it in mind. The number of arguments in the array can be obtained. No, sorry, here. Can occur only once and at the end of the parameter list. Yeah, You cannot have, for example, in here, um, here is the example. I let you go now. Here is the example. I cannot have, for example, here int size. 
compiler will immediately complain here the variable argument type double of method average must be the last parameter must be the last parameter if I put it last then no problem yeah now I cannot have multiple of those yeah, which makes sense. Uh, if I have multiple, how can the compiler differentiate between the two? So I can only have one, and it must be the last. And once I have it, it's like a list. And what, the way I call it, here is the way I call it. I can pass as many as I wish. Of course, in this context, four will go into the size, and the remaining will go into numbers. And numbers is exactly like a list. I can look through it, I can get the length, and do all this stuff. Okay, that's it for this. So, inshallah, next time I will be covering exceptions and enumeration and some other concepts. Definitely. Thank you.